Because soon, eventually, when God is gone from society, when Christianity has disappeared from society, and we live in a world now where you have unlimited migrants coming who don't care, don't respect the country anymore, they're going to turn up, LGBT will be trying to take your children, everyone will say, where did God go? Everyone will be saying, where did God go? And that's why I think it's important to have a commentary from a Catholic perspective. Welcome to The Father Leo Show, where I'm dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. And in this episode, we're going to actually discuss a little bit more about the Olympics opening ceremony and just the Olympics in general. And I can say that I am currently in Greece recording this show. This is the birthplace of the Olympics, and my oh my, has it changed. So we're gonna get into it, especially with the opening ceremony, all of the fake apologies, and we're gonna talk about it in a way from a Catholic perspective, not so as to divide us or to try to, I don't know, even boycott the Olympics. I'm not sure if that's the best approach, but how can we respond in a Catholic and pastoral way to all the craziness that is being shoved down our throats? And before we do that, I just want to say thanks to all of those who are subscribers. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and also consider joining us on our Patreon community because there you get access to special perks as well as some great content and also the commentary. Again, how can we approach this in a very specific way? that is Catholic. So let's just jump right into it now with how the Catholic Church has responded to these Olympics opening ceremony. Let's get into it with our faith commentary. Well, there's no doubt that there are a lot of people who are outraged by what they saw on the Olympics, in the Olympics opening ceremony. We're going to talk specifically about whether or not this was a parody of The Last Supper or if it was simply a tableau representation of a Dionysius the feast, the celebration of Bacchus, the goddess of wine, the god of wine, that is. But these days, Bacchus could be a goddess. Who knows? But it's kind of interesting, and I want to kind of open up with this quote that in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, and this is a part of St. Paul's letter to the people of Galatia, which was in kind of central Turkey now. He writes, Do not be deceived. God is not to be mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows in his flesh will reap the corruption of flesh, but the one who sows in the spirit will reap the spirit in eternal life. It's kind of interesting because the, the head of the Greek Orthodox Church has this to say. It's a, his All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, head of the Orthodox Church. He writes, the Olympic Games are a top sporting event which attracts the interests of millions of our fellow human beings from every corner of the globe, and the opening ceremony is of great importance, as it is an opportunity to promote the history and the culture of that host country and to spread positive message worldwide. It was with great sadness that we watched during the ceremony in Paris offensive representation of Christianity and the Holy Gospel, but also of every civilized person who recognized the right of faith and respect for religious symbols. Key, religious symbols. These images not only did not, these images not only did not enrich the ceremony, it marred it. It is not progress to blaspheme God, nor is it right to insult the religious beliefs of our fellow human beings. The spontaneous expression of disgust and approval by the people, we hope, has sufficiently sent a sufficiently loud message to the decision makers and is a source of hope for avoiding similar actions in the future. So, you know, very diplomatic statement. Uh, comes out hard, but at the same time doesn't want to put blame on people necessarily, but says, we hope that we can avoid something like this in the future. Now, the problem is that if you don't call it out and stop it, they're always going to hide these organizers of these kind of woke events are going to hide behind, oh, we didn't want to offend anybody. And that's just kind of sad. Cardinal Burke, uh, 
talks about it as an abominable mockery of the Eucharist. And there is a, a recent bishop's response, and this is reported by EWTN News Nightly, that there are new developments today in the pushback against the controversial opening ceremonies to the Paris Olympics, especially the depiction of the Last Supper. Today, a group of 24 Catholic bishops from around the world demanded an apology from the International Committee. The strongly worded letter says the opening ceremonies was an intentionally hateful mockery of the Last Supper. The bishops also said that it's hard to understand how the faith of over two trillion people 2 billion people can be so casually and intentionally blasphemed. The church leaders also call for a day of prayer and fasting. Two dozen bishops signed the letter. They include, obviously, Cardinal Raymond Burke of Wisconsin, Archbishop Coakley of Oklahoma City, and Bishop Athanasius Schneider of Kazakhstan. And so these are the some of the international bishops. I don't believe the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops has responded, nor have I seen anything from the Holy Father. But I can say that God spoke loudly and clearly. The opening ceremonies was followed by a complete blackout. The only thing that remained lit was the Basilica of the Sacre Coeur. And it's really a beautiful testimony that in the darkness of it all, God will never be mocked. God's light will always shine brightly as a beacon for those who dwell in darkness. Um, it, what people will always say, though, that, oh, but you know what? You're, you're really making more of it than it is. Well, I can tell you that that can't be farther from the truth. You know, Christianity is being mocked in every sector of society. And what was supposed to be an international gathering of amateur athletes kind of celebrating their craft, their skill, their technique, their discipline in a particular sporting event has really become politicized and a platform for people to push an agenda. It seems that the Olympics is only partially about sports and athletes. It's now more about when they say celebrating inclusion, that just basically means trying to promote an ideology of woke gender confusion. And you can even see that there is, uh, let me just say that there is a, a need to almost push out in their, uh, in their desire to be inclusive. They almost want to get rid of Christianity in general. This comes from X. This is a post that 23-year-old Brazilian surfer uh, could not use his Christ the Redeemer surfboard because they violated the Olympic rules. Uh, and so, you know, this is his, um, this, this was kind of, not, not an allegation, but this was his experience that somehow as a Brazilian surfer with the the humongous Christ the Redeemer um, image, which is kind of iconic for Brazil. Apparently, they did not allow it. And so you have to ask yourself, what really is the purpose of the Olympics? Well, I can say, especially in my upcoming commentary, that it's to run so as to win. And we can't really try to seek a crown that will wither and fade, but really the crown of victory. And between now and the time we get to heaven, we're going to have to deal with a culture that is just so unclassy. That's our next conversation. What is so very interesting is that there are sectors in our culture, our modern society, that is just so easily offended by everything. But if they are the sources of the offense, then they think that they should have a pass because they didn't intend to offend. So intention for them matters. By the way, it does matter. Intention does matter. But the intentions are always going to have to be measured by the outcome of a thing especially, you know, if it's not my intent to offend somebody, but I do, what should I say? Should I be apologetic for what I did? 
or hide behind my intention. This is the disgusting part of the Olympics organizing committee for the opening ceremony, how they have failed, 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 failed to a point of sheer, absolute, disgusting embarrassment. There's no other way to say it. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that they'll say. One of the drag queens from that controversial Last Supper parody at the Olympics opening ceremony, doubling down as backlash grows. The performer insisting this was not the Last Supper, but rather the Feast of Dionysus, arguing even if it was the Last Supper, quote, what's the harm? Why is it a parody and not a tribute? And can't drag queens be Christians too? Meanwhile, Olympic organizers apologizing, insisting clearly there was never an intention to show disrespect to any religious group. We really did try to celebrate community tolerance. And then, of course, we have some of the most odd things said about the uh, about the this image of the feast of the Last Supper. This is coming strictly now from Clearly someone. Never. This is coming from someone who was on. This is these are her words about this whole debacle. Uh, to to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that Thomas Jolie really tried to uh, really intend to, to celebrate community tolerance. That was uh, his word yesterday. And uh, looking at the result of the polls that we shared, uh, we believe that this ambition was, uh, was achieved. If people uh, have taken any offense, uh, we are, of course, really, really sorry. You know, and, and I honestly don't buy it. They, they basically think that they did a good job. This is the kind of silliness that the world believes in now, where everyone gets a trophy, including the one who offends and the one who failed. They somehow get a pass. It's, it's really shocking, honestly, how unaware people are uh, about just, just completely unaware of themselves. And this is going to be, uh, you know, Another apology from a drag queen himself who talks about how this really wasn't a bad thing at all. This was actually a good thing and that we, we, the people of God, we're the ones who need to change our attitude. This is what he says. Absolutely no regret. My only regret is... Uh people's reaction, because I'm sorry for it. I'm sorry if people are offended, but we didn't try to parody, to mock the Last Supper. It was not the point. So I can't regret what I did, uh, but I'm sorry for the reaction. I'm sorry for people to only see things in, the, in a bad way. Um, maybe change the perspective, change the point of view, try to see the beauty in what we did, because it was just only beauty. It was just only about beauty and, and re reunion and reparation. It was about beauty, reunion, and reparation. Now, he's obviously not an original English speaker, so I can kind of understand his, his searching for the right words. But this is a drag queen that took the center stage at the Paris Olympics. His name is Hugo Bardin. He's the drag queen from Paloma who has no regrets. And he wants us, the people who were offended or disgusted by this, to, to change our perspective. Because in his mind, we should have saw, we should have seen beauty, reunion, which basically means community and coming together, and reparation. And that's an interesting term because we're hearing a lot from the world about how we need to repair for people, to make reparations for people who were hurt in any way. So in a sense, drag queens are now the new heroes of society. And I guess my question is, what exactly was the purpose? What was the purpose of these opening ceremonies? Because I couldn't figure it out. And, you know, when we look at the purpose of 
the opening ceremonies of the past, I mean, all you have to do is just do a Google search of past performances and you see like how they have just been amazing, but there's been a steady decline into weirdness, into darkness, into chaos, and now pushing an agenda. You know, where are the performers who actually are good at something? I hate to say it, but this man is delusional. I mean, he might be a nice guy. I'm not making a, a comment on him as a person, but his way of thinking, he is clearly delusional, absolutely brainwashed. If he thinks that those opening ceremonies were beautiful, he's a fool. If he thinks that this was about bringing people together, I have to ask which people, which people, because these are people that weren't thinking straight they don't actually understand the reality of the world and that you can't live in a fantasy and think that wearing a costume makes you who you are on the inside. And if he thinks that the opening ceremonies is about reparation, then he is clearly, clearly an immature, entitled brat. Because no, the opening ceremonies are about promoting the culture showing how athleticism is really something amazing. But when you just look at the opening ceremonies, the highlights, they were dark. And I can say that when they claim, if you were offended, then we're sorry. Technically, I wasn't offended. I'm going to share how I felt, you know, in my commentary. But I can say that all of this is showing a true decline in culture. Jill Biden, excuse me, Dr. Biden thought that the opening ceremonies were so spectacular and she sat in awe and she claimed, how are we going to top this? <laughs> My God, I'm sorry, Dr. Biden, a child school play is better than these opening ceremonies, which didn't cost millions, perhaps even billions of dollars to put something on where people just walked away thinking, I mean, it's impressive in the scale of a thing, but artistically watching drag queens like writhe on the floor to see really odd images. Now, here's where I will say, could this have been uh, a tableau of Dionysius's celebration of the feast, because there can be parallel similarities to it. But I'm sorry, that's not true. They are lying to you. They're only saying this now, because if you were to actually look at the last, if you were to take a look, for example, at the way this was supposed to come across, when you type it in, uh, and this is just kind of a, a unique little Google search, and I found this, and this could be wrong, but... So, Le Seine sur une, the, uh, the, the, the Seine River, the Last Supper, excuse me, the Supper on the Seine, is kind of, if you kind of look at it, it, it translates into a, a type of a, a Last Supper. Now, again, could this have been a tableau of the Bacchus, Bacchus's feast, um, the god of, of wine and the Last Supper? Could it have been that? Could. But how did other people see this? It looked more like Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. So guess what? Olympic committee organizers on the opening ceremony, you failed miserably. Admit it. And people are kind of backtracking and saying, oh, but it really wasn't that. I mean, Whoopi Goldberg, who probably didn't even know who Dionysius is or who Bacchus is, she kind of comes out full force and tries to defend it. And then she gets defensive about it. And this is a woman who made her mark in the world by by a role she played as a nun in the Catholic Church, but here she is now.
But then there was instant controversy over an opening number featuring drag performers that some people said was a blasphemous take on Da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper. Now, organizers said, uh, we're sorry, but, you know, the guy who actually put it all together said it was uh, from the Feast of the Gods, which is a 17th century Dutch painting of the Greek Olympian gods, you know, the Olympian gods, because it's the Olympics. Okay. And there are many more pe people in the picture they're talking about here. There's people on the side, you know, and it's like, come on, y'all. It's the Olympics. Stop. They're not trying to do anything except talk about the, the history. They're showing you the history. There are more too many people in the picture for it to be the 12 disciples and then the seven or eight other people who are in the picture. <laughs> well, this is more people. So I guess the only thing that I can say is that Whoopi Goldberg, she can read a cue card and she can pretend that she's smart uh, because I don't think she's dumb, but she really does sound unintelligent when it comes to this. And here's why, because culture doesn't realize, culture doesn't realize that symbol does communicate. And if symbols are interpreted as they claim wrongly, whose fault is that? Is it the symbol's fault? No. Is it the interpreter's fault? It could be. But when you have a world who is disgusted and outraged by this thing, then maybe it was the person who promoted that symbol. That's the problem. I mean, even the French were horrified by this whole thing. This is a kind of an interesting reaction. <laughs> You can see that, I mean, I know that the subtitles were in Chinese, but the, the look on the guy's face, and then I actually saw the, the remaining of that. These people walked out, they're just like going, they turn it off and they just kind of walked out because they were just disgusted by it. But what is a proper reaction? Well, that's where we're going to jump into it for our commentary. But that's going to be for our Patreon supporters. But let me at least just give you a highlight of this because I want to ask ourselves, is Andrew Tate's response to all of this, is it the Catholic response? God is the most important thing in the world. He's the true judge. And to sit here and let France mock the country, mock your religion, make fun of every single thing you feel holy. This is the Last Supper. What's very important to remember is that the European Union gave 100 million euros for France to do this Olympics. So they took your, your tax money, money, took your money, your tax money, money, and they're making fun of, of Jesus Christ. Okay. That's, it's our money, you know, as Romanian taxpayers, they're using our money to do There's this. There's no, the worst thing is this is nothing to do with sports, right? This has nothing to do with sports. They did this on purpose because they are Satanists, yeah. because they hate God, they hate Jesus, they want to corrupt your children. LGBT, they cannot have their own children, the gay people, they need your kids. When your kid goes to school and learns these things, you're gonna be very angry that not enough people stood up and said that this is unacceptable. We're not here to hurt anybody, but if nobody stands up, I'm a Muslim, I'm not even Christian. As a Muslim, I show more respect for Jesus Christ than most Christians. We're the only people who will be looked at in history who care. Because soon, eventually, when God is gone from society, when Christianity has disappeared from society, and we live in a world now where you have unlimited migrants coming who don't care, don't respect the country anymore. They're going to turn up. LGBT will be trying to take your children. Everyone will say, where did God go? Everyone will be saying, where did God go? And that's why I think it's important to have a commentary from a Catholic perspective. So if you want to hear that, please make sure you join our Patreon community. There are many different levels on your way to participate in our Patreon community. So if you want to hear my commentary on this, how can a Catholic approach all of this, make sure you join us on our patreon.com slash the Father Leo show. But between now and the next time we speak with each other, God bless you and stay hungry for God.